Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation, keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. Welcome to Mission Evolution Radio Show with Gwilda Wiaka, bringing together today's leading experts to uncover ever-deepening spiritual truths and the latest scientific developments in support of the evolution of humankind. For more information on Mission Evolution Radio with Gwilda Wiaka, visit www.missionevolution.org. And now, here's the host of Mission Evolution, Miss Gwilda Wiaka. Hello, dear friends. This is Mission Evolution Radio Show, where we share innovative thoughts with today's leading scientific and esoteric experts supporting the path to unity and enlightenment. I'm Gwilda Wiecka. This hour, we'll be exploring beyond the physical, what doctors see but don't tell. Medical doctors are trained to focus on the physical world, the provable and explainable, in order to diagnose and treat physical illness. Yet these gallant individuals spend most of their careers dancing the line between life and death with many of their patients. What have they experienced regarding the non-physical aspects of life and death that they may not discuss in professional world for fear of losing credibility? What more can be learned about the nature of life if they were to share their more mysterious experiences? How would the face of health care evolve if the non-physical aspects of life are factored in? With us this hour to explore the mysterious experiences many doctors have is Dr. Scott Kolbaba, author of Physicians Untold Stories. Dr. Kolbaba is an internist in private practice in Wheaton, Illinois. He graduated from the University of Illinois College of Medicine with honors and did his residency at Rush Presbyterian St. Luke's Medical Center in Chicago and at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. He's been awarded memberships in the Alpha Omega Alpha Honor Medical Society and has been featured in Chicago Magazine as a top doctor in internal medicine. His website, physiciansuntoldstories.com. Dr. Kobaba, thank you so much for joining us on Mission Evolution. Thanks, Will. It's uh, fun to be here. How did you become aware of the more esoteric aspects of the human being? You know, it's probably an evolutionary process. It didn't happen all at once, and uh, there were a number of things, that little things that happened to me. And I think the first thing uh, that I can think of that made me aware that there is something else that uh, uh, is out there that, that's a little different than the usual uh, run-of-the-mill day-to-day activities was when we were on vacation with my family. Now, I've got a big family. I've got seven kids. I'm not sure where they all came from, but I've got seven kids. <laughs> 
some are adopted, um, and uh, we have a lot of fun going on vacations. And as a matter of fact, my my parents used to take us on vacation, me on vacation. I was an only child, which is probably why I have seven children. And we had a wonderfully close family. We went to I, some of the big vacations I can remember were uh, in uh, Yellowstone, and we had some great times there. I'll never forget one time where my mother um, was going out to take a shower in one of the um, bathrooms that didn't have a door. It just had the, one of those mazes that go into the into the into the washroom. And about two seconds after she went in, she was running out as fast as I've ever seen her run, and there was a black bear chasing her. Oh and, my. Uh, that was uh, that was really I thought was really very funny. She didn't think it was funny at all. But uh, uh, so we had some great times, and I loved. I wanted to um, to do those kinds of fun times with my own family. And and when my mother died, uh, it was really a we were a very close family. It was really really hard. And uh, I'll never forget a, a trip we took with all of our family, seven kids, uh, their 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 kids, my some of my grandkids to Cape Cod, and. Uh, uh, on those vacations, the boys like to cook. So we actually do a pretty good job. We can boil more than water. And we were cooking a swordfish on the grill, and we had some wonderful, uh, wonderful meal. And when we went out shopping, uh, we noticed that they had pies on sale there, uh, cherry pies, a whole stack of cherry pies. And the boys decided to get some about six cherry pies, which is what we needed for the, the crowd. And we got to talking about pies, and, and we mentioned that uh, if my mother was, was – was there. She obviously had died before that. She'd make us a rhubarb pie because every year we had a rhubarb plant in our backyard and she'd make rhubarb pie. And it was a great pie. And we'd sneak into the house sometimes and we'd grab spoons and we'd, uh, we'd ignore the uh, germ theory. We'd all dig into the pie together and uh, eat as much as we could. And it was delicious, very, very sweet rhubarb pie. And so we decided that that was probably our favorite pie. If my mother was there, she'd make us a rhubarb pie. So we got to the, the meal, which was delicious, swordfish, corn on the cob, and, and then we had the pie. My wife served the pie, the cherry pie. And when I took a bite, I had goosebumps up and down my spine, and I had a little chill because it wasn't a cherry pie. It was a rhubarb pie. Oh. And it was one of those days that it was just a special day. And I, I kept thinking to myself, I wonder what my mother would do if she was here. She would love to have to be with the family like this. And and I think that rhubarb pie uh, told me that she was there with us and, and enjoying that incredibly family incredible family time that we had. So that was one of the first experiences that got me thinking about things that are not part of this world. And wow. um, so, and, what what are doctors taught about spiritual or esoteric experiences? Nothing. Doctors are taught nothing about that. Doctors are pretty scientific. We're all nose to the grindstone, learning about the chemicals and the, the pharmacology and the anatomy and so forth. We're not taught anything about uh, spiritual things. But uh, and uh, you know, doctors don't talk about this stuff well either. Uh, very very few doctors will talk about uh, their experiences that they've had that are not scientifically based. You know, we talk about our golf games, we talk about. Uh, the gut last call about it somebody had or what an uh, interesting case they had, but nothing about the spiritual. And my first, uh, and it took a while. I, I was in practice about 20 years before I, a doctor came up to me and, and told me about one of these incredible spiritual experiences that, that he had. This was Dave Bokel. And I was making rounds on the floor, and Dave came up to me, an orthopedic surgeon, and said, Doc, Scott, I've got to tell you about this incredible experience with one of our mutual patients, Mary. Now, Mary uh, had a foot surgery scheduled, and Dr. Mokel was a, a foot surgeon, so he was doing surgery on her. They put her to sleep, and then she suddenly arrested. Mm -hmm. We found out later on, and arrested means her heart stopped, she stopped breathing, she was basically dead, no response to anything. And we found out later that it was the result of the antibiotic that was given to her just before the surgery started. But when she arrested, uh, everyone uh, calls, they call a code, and everyone from the different rooms comes into the uh, operating room where she was, and they, they start CPR and so forth. And this one fellow that was doing CPR had some pretty bright red hair underneath his operating room cap, and he was doing CPR, but it wasn't adequate enough to perfuse her, her body. And Dr. Mokel, who's in charge of the code, was, was not feeling a pulse. So he asked the, the tech to, to move aside so he could start the CPR himself. Well, he didn't move aside for a couple of times, and codes are not really polite affairs. They're life and death. So he actually <laughs> got a little upset and pushed the guy aside and started doing CPR himself. 
and after the, the that CPR and some some uh, uh, and uh, some of the um, chemicals and, and drugs that they gave, she came back but was never awake and never conscious. And uh, she finally recovered from this. And after about three days, Dr. Mokul was meeting with her to, to let her go home and talk to her about instructions with the ankle, which was never operated on. And she said, thank you for saving my life, Dr. Mokul. And he said, well, it was just a team effort, you know. And, and she said, no, no, I saw you push that guy aside and start CPR on me. And by that time, Dr. Mokul got kind of weak in the knees and had to sit down. He said, what do you mean? And she said, well, when I arrested, I rose to the top of the room and I could see everything that was happening. I saw, the, I saw you push the guy with the red hair aside and start doing CPR yourself. I saw... And you know, she mentioned multiple, multiple little minutia of details that happened in that code. And he said, well, how could that be? And she said, I was watching the whole thing. As a matter of fact, when that, when that happened, I was, my grandmother came to me who had died long before and told me it wasn't my time to go and that if I was a good and kind person, she would reserve a place for me in heaven. And then you know, after Dr. Mokul started to do CPR and they, they gave her the adrenaline, she came back and... Um, What's interesting is that uh, after that uh, episode, uh, Mary was not really the most kind person in the world before that. But afterward, she was an incredibly kind and wonderful person. She would bake us cookies when she came to the office, and uh, it was a joy to, to see her. You know, it's, I've heard in, in various near-death experiences that people's personalities can totally change because of the experience. This sounds like an example of that. It's, it was like a like a, a Scrooge experience. It was you know one minute she was kind of a curmudgeon to be honest with you, she was never happy with anything we were doing. Why did we why were we late for seeing her in the office and so forth? And after this, she was very kind and considerate and wonderful. And so I said to Dr. Mokul, you know, who did you tell this story to? And he said, well, no one. They'll think I'm crazy. You know, this is an ordinary doc that's doing an ordinary, you know, making ordinary living, doing uh, orthopedic surgery, doing just fine. He was afraid to tell anyone this story. And so after that, after I heard that, I thought, there's got to be other stories that these doctors are not telling anyone, not even other doctors. And that's when I started my investigation and talking to doctors. And I interviewed about two to 300 doctors to see if they had stories. And I was, I was amazed and surprised to find out that many doctors have stories like this. And many patients have stories like this, too. I suspect well, you, know, we, you do. Or, yeah, we, we dance. You know, when you're working in the medical field, you're, you're right there between life and death oft times with people. Yes. And, and you have no training or anything to prepare you for that, do you? No. No, we don't. And uh, uh, and when you run across a story like that, when you run across something that happens like that, it really uh, it, it brings you back and, and you say to yourself, there's something else out there. There's some other, whatever you call it. Most of our doctors would call it God, but uh, you can call it whatever you want, a spirit, uh, a universe, a presence. There's something else that is uh, looking, looking down on us and uh, I think uh, tries to help us do the right thing and do, do the good in the world. Mm. That's a beautiful way of looking at it. Um, we're going to have to take a commercial break, but on the other side, I'd really like to get into what is that something else and how can we deal with that when we're in the medical profession? Sure. <laughs> okay. This is time for the commercial break, so Dr. Kolbaba and I will return shortly. Don't you go away. You're listening to the Mission Evolution Radio Show, coming to you on the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.exedbn.net. You stay right there. It's hard to listen to the news without realizing we're living in volatile, unprecedented times. Yet never has there been such an opportunity to transform the human condition. As old structures fail, where can we find the guidance to co-create a better way? Find Your Path Home is an ever-evolving, leading-edge information, education, and healing resource center designed to support and guide you on your path to unity and enlightenment. Based on sound principles employed by Shaman Worldwide, we provide techniques that can support you through the current transitions, offering online shamanic classes, 
international long-distance shamanic healing sessions, complimentary Mission Evolution radio episodes and Stairway to Heaven TV vignettes, seminars, retreats, and much more. All of this can be found on findyourpathhome.com. So I was watching the X-Zone TV channel last night when I was abducted by aliens and they kept repeating to me over and over again, simultv.com, simultv.com. What's simultv.com? That's what I asked them. They had it written on the side of their UFO. How do you spell that? UFO. No, I mean simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Right. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Interesting that you were abducted by aliens in a simultv.com UFO last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now that you mention it, I remember now last night I was awakened from a deep sleep. My great-grandmother was standing there. She said she'd come from the hereafter to tell me about Simultv.com. She even spelled it out for me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, Sonny Boy. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, Sonny Boy. Wow. Yeah. Guys, you'll never guess what my psychic guru just told me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Exactly. Are you guys psychic too? Of course. We all know about Simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Shamanic healing is the key to personal empowerment. Why? All four levels of our being, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, must be addressed for us to enjoy balanced, healthy, abundant lives. Yet there are few provisions for spiritual or energetic healing. Shamanism, found at the root of all cultures, is a very effective spiritual healing modality. To find quality shamanic healing you can trust, regardless of where you live, look no further than find your Path Home Long Distance Shamanic Healing Program. All Path Home Long Distance Healing Practitioners have been trained and certified through Path Home Shamanic Heart School. Change your life. Live abundantly. Schedule a long distance shamanic healing session with Gwilda Wiecka or one of her quality practitioners today at findyourpathhome.com. Welcome back. This is the Mission Evolution Radio Show, missionevolution.org. We're dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. Our special guest this hour is Dr. Scott Kobaba. His website, physiciansuntoldstories.com. Dr. Kobaba, we were talking about how uh, the medical profession is really not prepared to deal with a thing that they deal with all the time, and that's when a person leaves a physical body and becomes non-physical. Would you speak to that a little bit? What What do you think needs to change there? You know, uh, one of the reasons I wrote my book, well, is is I wanted to make people more aware that these things do happen, that doctors don't generally talk about them, and that it's okay to talk with your doctor about the spiritual things, uh, the things that uh, you may not, uh, ex- you know, that may not understand totally, uh, and your belief system. And so, and I think um, when I when the doctors told me these stories, we were all afraid that people would would uh, think that we're crazy that uh, you know that that uh, we were a little bit on the on the on the other side of normal but just the opposite happened uh, most people that have read the book or have come to these doctors that have shared the stories with me have congratulated them and thanked them for bringing out these these experiences because everyone has had experiences like this almost everyone in the world I think has an, a strange uh, uh, and an experience like a coincidental experience that they can't quite explain. And um, so I think um, my goal was to help people uh, realize that, that they can share these experiences. And my hope is that doctors and patients will share with each other uh, their unusual experiences because I think uh, there's, a, there's a lot of hope in, in believing in something. And uh, people with serious illnesses need need hope, and I think that's one of the things that we brought uh, to people with the book, and that is hope that there's something else out there that looks out for us and, and is with us, whether we uh, know it or not. Can a physician lose their license if they step too far over the line in the sand between science and spirit? I don't think they can lose their license, but the, the doctors that I dealt with were worried about losing their patients, because if you get a little bit you know, too off uh, the deep end, uh, patients would think that you're a little bit, uh, a little bit crazy, a little bit different. But none of that happened. I was really amazed. Uh, my patients thanked me for for bringing these kinds of stories uh, into light, 
And the doctors did too because uh, they had many patients come to them with, with stories of their own. So doctors won't lose their license, but uh, the concern was losing patients, which really didn't happen. And we were very pleased and, and, and grateful that we didn't. Well, you know, the, uh, in my line of work, I, I help the dead um, to cross a lot. So mm-hmm. I, I've been in hospice a lot when people are just on the br- brink getting ready to go. Mm-hmm. And in my experience, the ones that don't believe in a hereafter have a terrible time crossing. Have a, they really struggle. Mm-hmm. Because they figure they're ending. And the ones that do have, um, you know, a cognizance of the other side and the continuation of life after death just really go more peacefully. Have you experienced any of that? Yes, I think uh, the hospice doctors deal with uh, uh, death and dying more than I do. But, you know, obviously we all have patients that, that uh, we lose. But I think that's that's very true. And, and some of the, the doctors have told me stories. Uh, Noemi Sigalov, for example, a general surgeon told me about a couple that uh, she took care of for a long time. Uh, Ron was one of the uh, uh, the doc- he was actually a doctor himself uh, that she took care of, and Ron was a missionary, a missionary physician in Africa for a long period of time. And when they retired because they got too old to to, to be dealing with that kind of work in in Africa, uh, Ron uh, was seeing Noemi Sigalov, the surgeon, and he kept saying to her. Now, someday I'll show you that there is something beyond this life. That uh, you know, my my goal for you is is to is to make you believe that there's something more. And she said, "No, thank you." And she was very courteous, but uh, you know, wasn't sure that she quite believed that. And um, she would decide. She uh, Noemi was was kind of burned out with uh, a lot of stress, and she decided to go on a little three day trip to kind of recharge her batteries. And so the night before, naturally, we all end up with disasters <laughs> right before we leave on vacation it seems and she had an emergency surgery and she had to take care of that late at night and so she went in early in the morning to uh, to uh, to see the patients before her flight to, to to Tucson and so when she was walking through the, the doors of the hospital there was a whiff of air and all of a sudden she could see she had a vision of Ron the person that she dealt with in the past that she hadn't seen for a number of years uh, standing there with a smile on his face that signified to her the ultimate uh, in in uh, satisfaction, like he had achieved the ultimate goal in his life. That, that was that kind of a smile. And and uh, then uh, she said, hello there. And, and all of a sudden, uh, she realized that she was talking to a, 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 a vision. The vision disappeared. She was kind of embarrassed. She looked around to see if anyone was, had seen her. And no one had seen her, so she went about her, her day to, to, to take care of the person and uh, went on her vacation. Uh, when she's on vacation, she shut off all her email and everything, uh, all communications, because she just wanted to relax. But on her way back uh, at the airport, she turned on the email, and uh, there was a, a note from the vice president of medical affairs. Uh, and the, the note went something like the email went something like this: uh, "We regret to announce the death of Ron so and so, who died the morning that she left, early in the morning before she had seen the vision." Hmm. So what had happened was that he had come back in a vision and uh, was showing her the ultimate goal in his life, and that is to show her there is life after death, that there's something that is beyond what we have here on this earth. And um, she said that was the most moving experience, that she had chills, and, and it's the most moving experience she'd ever had. Wow, I can I can believe that. I mean, between that and the the foot surgeon, it's like life changing, isn't it? I mean, a, a near death experience changes life for the one that has the experience. But it sounds like these experiences are are really changing you guys' worldview. It really is, and the doctors that have had these experiences have become uh, much stronger in faith, and uh, I think better people, and they un- and then and they are receptive also to the stories and the experiences of, of their patients. So it's not uh, inappropriate to bring up some of your experiences with your doctor. Then thank goodness that that's changing because we all have experiences. But if we can't trust the one that's trying to help us stay here <laughs> right. with the experiences we're having in the process, um, boy, that really puts a glitch in the works, doesn't it? It does. It does. Yeah. And so, how, how have you ahead. personally reconciled the spiritual aspect of your patients with your training? Um. Well, you know, I believe in God. I believe there's something else out there, and I believe that uh, God looks looks after us and and um, is part of our life on, a, on a, almost a daily basis. Uh, I've I have had uh, multiple occasions where they I thought they were little coincidences, but they they just turned out to be uh, 
more than just a coincidence. I'll, I'll give you an example. Just this Sunday, I was uh, in, the, in church uh, sitting there, and I thought to myself, I need to look at my CPR uh, to, to make sure I know if it's 30 compressions to, to two breaths or 15 compressions to two breaths. <laughs> so I looked it up, and the very interesting thing happened that next hour in Sunday school, one of our parishioners uh, became unconscious. And uh, we had to decide whether to start a CPR or not because he didn't have a pulse. And I was ready to start CPR, okay. but then he came back. And I thought I got I got goosebumps again thinking, why did I happen to look at my uh, my phone in church to determine what uh, the, the, the compression ratio is with breaths? Uh, and it was very, very interesting. So I think things like that happen to many of us all the time. And I, I'm... I'm hopeful that my book will allow people to recognize those little events in their lives and realize that those are more than coincidences. Those are things that uh, where someone's looking out for us. And I believe it's God, and I think many of the doctors did too. That's amazing. You know, and you also speak of some doctors getting esoteric information on an existing condition. Are there many that have um, predicted in a, in another condition, an impending condition, like you had a pre- precog there of the uh, arrest that the gentleman went through? Yes, uh, which is very fascinating. You know, when you're really involved with this and care about your people that you see, uh, there, there are strange things that happen. My partner, John Bourne, for example, uh, does pre-op physicals for uh, the total joint surgeries in many cases. And he had an occasion where, and he says to me, when I hear that little voice in the back of my head, I don't ignore that because mm-hmm. it saved my life a number of times. In this particular event, he, he pre-opted a, 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 an individual. Uh, he thought everything looked okay. The EKG, the lab work, was everything everything was good. And he said he's cleared for surgery. And later on that day, he had this little naggy thing in the back of his head. And he thought, this guy needs a stress test. He needs a stress test. So he called him up and he said, you know, I know I cleared you for surgery, but I think you need a stress test. And the guy said, well, you know, I'm not going for a stress test. I don't need one. And he said, well, I can't, well I'm not going to clear you. Then you're not going to have your surgery. So he agreed to have a stress test. And sure enough, he, he failed the stress test badly, had the angiogram, had severe coronary disease, triple vessel disease, ended up with a bypass. And had he gone for major joint surgery, he could have arrested and died in that, in that procedure. So I think many of us as doctors get those little precognitions, that, pre, that, uh, that, that little thought that there's something else here that we need to address. And, uh, and, and many of us, most of us, listen to those, those thoughts because they, they come true in many cases. That's, you know, now, now there is something that we need to teach in medical school, right, is how to listen to that. <laughs> you know, I don't know if you can teach it, but, uh, but you, can, you can teach people how to listen to those, to those thoughts and to pay attention to those thoughts. Now, you know, not everything that you think about comes true. You, you know, we're not thinking about crazy things, but, but you get those little thoughts sometimes. And I, I would encourage not only doctors, but everyone to pay attention to those little, little, little premonitions because make a make a phone call to a friend. There have been doctors that have that have had an idea to make a phone call to someone that was ready to commit suicide at the very time that they made that phone call. And had they not made that phone call, that person would have been dead. So what what is that? Um, you know, I think that's something from above looking out for us. I agree. And pay attention We're- to those things. We're going to have to take another quick pause. Dr. Kobaba and I will return to our discussion shortly, so you stay right there. This is the Mission Evolution Radio Show. We're coming to you on the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Don't go away. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. 
With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, The X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com, or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation, keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. Welcome back. This is the Mission Evolution Radio Show, missionevolution.org, bringing leading ev- information supporting the path to enlightenment. We're speaking with Dr. Scott Kobaba. His website, physiciansuntoldstories.com. Dr. Kobaba, where does do dreams play in here? Have, have, that, have you gotten messages through dreams or any of the people that you interviewed? Yes. Uh, dreams, I think, are another means of, of uh, informing doctors and others uh, about uh, impending events. There was one particularly spectacular dream that I recall. Uh, Rich Jorgensen is a uh, general surgeon, and uh, Rich uh, was uh, very good friends with the judge. And the judge uh, uh, had not seen a doctor for quite some time, and and it was obviously pretty healthy, he thought, and doing okay. And Rich one night had uh, had a busy schedule during the day and had a very vivid dream. And uh, he dreamed that the judge had uh, had died, and he saw him in the coffin. It was a very vivid, vivid dream, and he saw people weeping around the uh, the coffin and and the funeral and and uh, the wake and so forth. And so when he woke up, uh, he doesn't recall very many dreams, and most people don't remember their dreams. But this was such a vivid dream that he remembered it, and uh, he decided. Uh, to call the judge and tell him that he had this dream, and uh, you know, you can imagine a person calling you up and saying, "You know, I dreamt that you were dead." <laughs> you know, you'd yeah. be a little shocked and a, yeah. a little bit, uh, uh, you know, a little bit dismayed. And the judge kind of laughed it off and said, "Oh, you know, that's uh, that, that's a crazy dream, Rich. Uh, you know, don't listen to those crazy dreams." And Rich said, "You know, would you just do me a favor, just?" Just go get a physical and just make sure you're okay. And the judge said, well, okay, I haven't had a physical for a while. I'll go get a physical. So he did get a physical. All the tests were normal, EKG, labs, chest X-ray. Everything was perfectly, perfectly normal. So he called Dr. Jorgensen back up and he said, okay, Rich, I, I got my physical. Everything's fine. You can forget about your dreams. Well, it was such a vivid, vivid dream that Dr. Jorgensen decided to pursue it a little bit further. You know, you know, he's sticking his neck out. He's got a good friend there, and he's trying to convince the friend that this is a, something true. But he, he just had that, that feeling that the, something is really, really wrong here, and he, he, he didn't want to let it go. So he said, could you just see a cardiologist just for me? Because uh, my, in my dream, it was a heart attack that, that, that caused you to, to cause your demise. And the judge said, oh, come on, Rich. I saw this doctor. Everything was okay. And Dr. Jorgensen finally convinced him to see his cardiologist. Well, he saw the cardiologist. They did a stress test. The stress test was abnormal, uh, so abnormal they put him right in the hospital. And they did an angiogram, and he had what's called a widowmaker, which is a, a lesion that um, uh, is in the main artery of the heart. With the life expectancy with a widowmaker is somewhere around, around three to six months at the very longest. Oh, goodness. So they decided to operate on him the next day because they were afraid of sending him home because if they did, he could arrest and die at home. So uh, he had a surgery. It was very successful. He lived for many, many years afterwards. And had he not gone for that uh, that physical and, and, and the, the, those studies, he probably would have died uh, in the next three to six months. 
You know, it, it takes such courage, doesn't it, to follow those promptings and and risk your your reputation. It um, does. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it does. He really stuck his neck out to to you know not only send him for a physical, but then one step further to send him to the cardiologist. And he, you know, um, but I, again, I hope people get a sense that there is something else out there that they do. There are premonitions. And and pursue some of those that that uh, it may result in in helping a person or saving a person's life. Mm. Have have any of the doctors you worked with shared stories of making contact with patients that have crossed outside of the one that saw the one in the hallway? Uh, there are, uh, and you know you, know, you you always wonder if people that have passed can still be in touch with us or or are aware of what's going on with us. One of the one of the uh, interesting stories that that uh, I, I heard was from uh, uh, Dr. Heitzler, who is uh, actually a gynecologist obstetrician that delivered two of our kids, and our, our kids are still walking and talking. So he did a pretty good job, I think. <laughs> and uh, he had eight children himself. His wife was named Joan, and Joan was in the delivery room uh, delivering their fifth child. And uh, while while she was uh, delivering the child, um, well, let me let me back up a little bit. Joan uh, was very very uh, familiar and, and loved her her grandmother, uh, Grandma O'Hanlon. Grandma O'Hanlon was a midwife, and Grandma O'Hanlon lived with uh, Joan lived with Grandma O'Hanlon uh, for a long time, and they became very very good friends and very very close. Uh, and they loved each other uh, very very much. And Joan would say. Uh, when she was a little girl, if I could make it to Grandma Hanlon's lap, uh, I'd be safe because my mother couldn't get me then. You know, there was, she was in trouble. So uh, when Joan was delivering her uh, fifth child, she had uh, a lot of pain after the delivery. And they had to do some additional procedures because of some retained placenta. So they decided to use a, a drug called Trilene, which is a, uh, a drug that they use by mask. It's a gas. And it puts the woman to sleep, uh, to deep sleep, and then they can do the procedures without any pain. So they were about ready to put the mask on Joan and give her the trilene when Grandma Hanlon steps into the room. And Grandma Hanlon was dressed in her usual garb with a kind of a little polka dot dress and a, a white sweater vest and a hair up, white hair up in a bun and old lady shoes. And she stood at the foot of the bed and, and shook her head that Joan shouldn't put that, uh, tri- shouldn't allow the trilene to be to be placed on her on her face and, and put her to sleep. And Joan didn't understand why, but she pushed the trilene away. Well, no one realized, no one knew uh, that Joan had eaten a large, large meal right before her, she went into labor and delivery. And about 30 seconds after she pushed the trilene mask away that would have put into a deep sleep, she vomited the entire meal that she'd had before. Had she had the mask on and had been deep sleep, she would have aspirated very much of what she vomited, and she could have died from that aspiration pneumonia. Oh, my goodness. So, Joan said that she made it to Grandma O'Hanlon's lap one last time, having <laughs> transited time and eternity, because Grandma O'Hanlon had died 22 years before that. Wow, that's an amazing story. It uh, really have, was. Have, have there been um, uh, substan- you know, doctors able to substantiate information that they get from the other side? You know, I, um, uh, I don't know if they've been able to substantiate it. Um, they uh, get get feelings and premonitions and and things like that, but I don't know um, if there's a uh, you know I think what you're looking for is uh, you know a certain uh, date or certain th- characteristics. I think some of those have happened, but I can't recall a specific right now uh, to give you. But but the doctors have uh, had had things happen that uh, I don't know if they can substantiate the the exact. Uh, dates and so forth. Right. But that the one you told me about the redheaded uh, medic being pushed aside, that's <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty profound, isn't it? That is pretty profound. And, and Dr. Molko was really moved about that. And, and uh, I'm glad he shared the story with me because he had, they didn't share it with anyone except for his family. Yeah. It's really something. Yeah. Wow. Um, you know, where do you stand on the professional detachment advocated in medical school? Um, you know, uh, doctors, uh, I think, have uh, conflicting uh, uh, goals. One is you want to be detached from your patients a little bit and not, not get too involved. On the other hand, after you've been with your patients for a while, you begin, you begin to love your patients. And uh, there is a, uh, so you, you really you do care about them and you do care when they have illnesses or, or other problems. 
there was there was one uh, fellow that I remember, uh, Gus. Uh, Gus was a, a World War II veteran, and I saw Gus for a long, long time. And I followed Gus through his whole life. And Gus developed Alzheimer's disease. And um, when he was bedridden, finally, and his wife took care of him, Lucy was a phenomenal nurse that took care of him. Uh, he was uh, uh, in bed with his deformed legs, and I never really asked Lucy what happened to him. And she said during World War II, he was uh, uh, marching in, you know, with his with his platoon into into Germany, and uh, there was a shell that that came down uh, and hit the platoon, and everyone was killed except for Gus. And Gus had terribly wounded uh, legs. And they wanted to amputate his legs, but he said, "No, you know, send me somewhere where I I can I can uh, get healed. Hopefully, he ended up with 17 operations. He finally got got healed, and his legs were were still very deformed. But uh, he was quite a hero uh, in in World War II. And and um, one morning, uh, Gus was getting old. He was about oh about this time he was about 92 years old. And I got a call in the morning uh, about uh, Gus from Lucy, and she said, Gus just, just died. I'm, I'm sorry to tell you. It's about 7 o'clock in the morning. And I was sad because uh, he'd become a good friend. And, and you know, you, you get a tear in your eye because you miss your, your, your people because they are almost like family. And so I went down to the doctor's lounge, and there my partner had just come in. And I said, oh, I, you know, I want to let you know that Gus, they just got a call that Gus died. Well, his face turned white, and he had to sit down. I said, what's the matter? And he said, this is so bizarre. You won't believe this. He said, every time I go into you know, the hospital, I turn the radio on, listen to the news and so forth in the morning. But this morning, I just had to turn the radio off because I had a feeling I had to listen to something. And so he shut the radio off and he kept thinking about Gus and about Gus's war experiences and how his interaction with Gus. And I said, what time did you shut the radio off? He said, seven o'clock. Oh my it was goodness. just the time that Lucy called me that Gus had died, and it's our 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 thinking that that Gus was had come back to thank us for the care that we provided for him, and uh, it was was uh, you know revealing that that thankfulness to uh, my partner Dr. Bourne, and uh, uh, so I think uh, people do uh, come back do communicate with us, and it was uh, very touching to hear that that. That uh, that that happened, and, and that he would say, you know, thank you for your, for your care over these years. It, it is amazing, isn't it? And then the little, like you call them, the coincidences or synchronicities that are actually messages from the other side. It's just phenomenal. Yes, yeah, it really is amazing. That uh, and if you know, we we get t- caught up with the with the events of life, and, and if we pay attention to these little coincidences, I think we'll always be surprised that that there's something else that directs uh, directs well, those. You and I need to take a commercial break, Dr. Koboba, and I will be back shortly. So don't you folks leave us now. This is the Mission Evolution Radio Show on the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. If you are looking for a safe, zero-calorie, natural option to the harmful artificial sweeteners on the market today, Just Like Sugar is what you're looking for. Just Like Sugar is a wonderful natural alternative for those health-conscious people who choose a calorie-restricted diet with a great, pure, sweet flavor that tastes just like sugar. Just Like Sugar is a great natural option for people suffering from diabetes and may be useful in restricted diet programs where standard sugars are not allowed and does not cause a laxative effect of some other sweeteners. Just Like Sugar comprises a perfect blend of chicory root fiber, natural calcium, natural vitamin C, and Just Like Sugar sweetness comes from the natural flavors from the peel of the orange. Just Like Sugar is a natural alternative to harmful artificial sweeteners and will change the way that you believe all natural sweetener products taste. Just Like Sugar is available at your local Whole Foods markets, Wild Oats markets, Henry's, Sun Harvest, and many other fine natural food stores in the U.S., Canada, and worldwide. They are here, and they've been here for thousands of years, making their presence known in the shadows. They might be seen by a lonely motorist on a deserted road late at night, or by a frightened and confused husband in the bedroom he is sharing with his wife. But who are they? What do they want? Why are they here? Perhaps most concerning, has the government been aware of their presence all along? 
The new book by Ellie Marzulli, UFO Disclosure, The 70-Year Cover-Up Exposed, delves into the world of UFOs. Can full disclosure be soon? Order now and receive a free hour and 37-minute DVD on the UFO phenomenon, UFOs Are Real. Get both the book and the DVD, a $40 value, for only $19.99. To order your book and DVD today, go to lamarzuli.net. That's L-A-M-A-R-Z-U-L-L-I.net. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simul TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like X-Zone, Sci-Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Memorable dynamic presentations are a not-so-secret weapon in the business world. Do you have a powerful message that must be shared, but you haven't found a way to deliver that message? Do you want to be known as a top public speaker who gets amazing results? Are you ready to create and deliver your powerful message? Thomas Hydes can help you create and deliver your speech to get the results you desire. Visit IconQuality.com. Did you expect your business to flourish, but instead it plateaued or didn't get off the ground yet? Would you like to achieve massive goals and discover new sources of income within your business? When you're ready to experience that type of success with fast results, Cindy Hendricks is the business coach for you. Her work with entrepreneurs and business owners has been life-changing. To get you and your business where you want to be, go to imaginemoresuccess.com. Has the fear of public speaking stalled your business or personal life? What would you give to develop and maintain supreme confidence? Have an invaluable private program to always perform at your best. Imagine how you would feel. You can have all that and so much more today with Thomas Hyde's life-changing course called Number One Fear Unleashed. Visit NumberOneFear.com and be liberated from your fear of public speaking. Welcome back. This is Mission Evolution Radio Show, bringing together gifted people of service to the world. To suggest a topic or guest, email us, info at missionevolution.org. And speaking of gifted people of service, our guest this hour is Dr. Scott Kobaba. His website, physiciansuntoldstories.com. Dr. Kobaba, how do you see the face of medicine changing if this information can become more mainstream and people can be more present with this kind of information? Well, you know, Gwilda, there are some interesting things that, that happen in medicine. Uh, for example, there have been uh, studies where people uh, pray for, for people they don't even know in the, uh, uh, in the ICU. And uh, the people they're praying for seem to do better than the ones that are not being prayed for. Um, I think this kind of information gives people hope that there's something else. Uh, when people have, face a serious illness, uh, I think sometimes when they when they have hope, when they feel that they might get better, what they that that there's someone someone else or something else looking out for them, I think people do better. Uh, we all see people with cancer and some serious illnesses that seem to do much better when they have hope, when they have something else to cling to cling to, that they believe rather than just uh, desperation. So I think that this will give people uh, more comfort, more peace, and I think uh, it'll it'll I think people heal quicker and heal better when they have a positive attitude, and um, I think that's what 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 these kinds of stories hopefully will will give to people. How about how it serves the the other doctors? Um, well, you know the doctors that uh, have have had 
listen to these stories that haven't had any stories them, uh, themselves or experiences, I think, uh, have a better awareness of things around them and, and the coincidences that happen to them. And I think what they're what they're what they do then is is they look for those those little coincidences, like the little premonition or the little thing that I mentioned with Dr. Bourne before, where. They, uh, they, they listen to that little voice that says, you know, maybe you should do a little bit more with this patient or maybe there's something else that, that uh, you should be doing. Uh, I'll never forget an experience that I had when I walked into one of the rooms uh, with a lady that had asthma, one of my, my partner's patients. I was just covering for him over the weekend. And she was on the phone for a long period of time and it was a little uncomfortable because uh, she was just on the phone and, and I was sitting there and most people hang up and say the doctor's in the room you know I'll hang up and, and call you later but she was and then for a long time she became silent and just, just listened uh, on the phone uh, with her eyes closed and I thought well, this is a little bizarre I didn't know quite what to do with myself I was shifting around and I began to think about some things and I thought I wonder if there's something else we need to look for in this in this person I wonder you know she has asthma and she had an asthma attack but maybe there's maybe there's something else maybe we should do a, a, a test called the D-dimer a D-dimer is a test for blood clots and so uh, she finally hung up and I talked with her and then I went out to the nursing station and ordered a D-dimer well, the nurse called me up a couple hours later and said the D-dimer was very positive. Normal's 300 or so, and hers was 1,800. So I said, well, get her down for an emergency lung scan. It turns out that her asthma was not asthma at all. It was blood clots. She had multiple oh blood goodness. clots in her lungs. And had we not made that diagnosis, she probably would have died of her blood clots. Mm. And so I, I, I called her up, and I said, listen, we're going to have to move you to the intensive, you know, the semi, the step-down unit and treat you with a blood thinner because it's not so much asthma anymore. It's, it's really a blood clot. And she said, well, I, I, uh, I knew you'd come up with the answer. And she said, I said, well, why? And she said, well, while you were sitting there, what, the reason I was so quiet was my pastor was praying. And he was praying with me that the doctor would then, at that moment, come up with the right solution, the right idea, what, what my diagnosis, what my condition was. And, and then I hung up the phone, and then uh, I knew you would come up with the answer after that prayer. And sure enough, we did. Now, that That's could be amazing. a coincidence, or it could be more than that. And I think it's more than that. And I think, you know, hopefully the doctors that, that read these stories or hear these kinds of stories will, will pay attention to those little premonitions that sometimes make a huge difference, and I don't think are just coincidences. Do you think that love and compassion create the connection? Um, through which you get this kind of information? In, in many cases, they do. I think love uh, can transcend um, uh, miles, uh, time, uh, eternity. I think there's, there's something about uh, uh, love that, that – uh, and family love especially that, that – uh, can can make a huge difference. John, one of the one of our patients, actually, uh, his name is John. I won't give his last name. Uh, he's a, 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 actually a patient of the doctor. I uh, had an experience where he was uh, uh, having a stroke, and uh, he he was kind of uh, the stroke made him a little confused and didn't know exactly what was happening. And he sat there for the longest time, not doing anything. And obviously, when you have a stroke these days, you like to get to a, a facility as quickly as possible to get the stroke reversed because we can do that these days. And he sat there and, and not, not did nothing. And all of a sudden, he got a text on his phone from his sister. Well, his sister never texts him. Uh, and for some reason, she said, I just, John, I just wanted you to know that I love you and I, I care for you. And he looked at that and thought, that's very strange. Why would she text me at this point? And then about five minutes later, she texted him again. And she said something like, you know, I just want you to take care of yourself and, 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 uh, uh, and, and make sure that you do all, the, all the, the things that you need to do. And that got him thinking about, well, maybe I need to call an ambulance. And so he called the ambulance. They took him to the hospital. It was a stroke. They reversed the stroke with no uh, residual uh, deficit. Thank goodness it was soon enough. And he asked his. He later on asked his sister, "Why did she text him like that when she never texts him before?" And she said, "I just had a feeling I had to stop my work. She lived the, many miles away, was at work, stopped in the middle of her work, and ran over to her desk and, and decided to text him, which she wasn't supposed to do at work anyway. But she said, "I felt an urgency to text you," and that literally probably saved uh, either saved his life or saved him from having a major deficit from his stroke. Mm -hmm. So I think the love there, that love connection, uh, transcended hundreds and hundreds of miles. And uh, uh, there's, there's something to the love, especially love in families. 
So. We know there, um, uh, there's a whole um, movement of d- different doctors on the, kind of on the leading edge of, of the electromagnetic field that's put out by the physical heart. And um, that actually it's, it's, it's proving to be a connection point between people that the brain cannot be. Have you heard anything about that? I've not read that much about that, but I, 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 there's, there's some connection. Uh, there's no question. There's some connection that, that people that love each other have a, a, a bond that, uh, that, that just transcends uh, any scientific explanation. My wife, for example, um, I'll never forget this. My son, my little son, uh, was in grade school and had asthma problems. And one day my wife just uh, uh, was at, at home and she suddenly had to drop everything she was doing. She jumped into the car, raced to the school, and uh, as, she was, as she was entering the school, there was my son walking out of the classroom with a severe asthma attack that she had to uh, take right to the hospital. Uh, and so there's something about love and the connection there that uh, I can't explain. And, and maybe there is some electromagnetic force. Uh, maybe it's God. Maybe there's – I don't know. But uh, there's something that happens with love. Well, God knew what he was doing when he created us, but there's a lot to us that we don't understand, isn't there? That's, that's true. That's very true. How do you think medicine can change if there's more openness, um, oh, even at the college level, with this information, if it's starting to be brought forward originally rather than waiting for, to get hit over the head with it? I think people would just pay more attention to uh, the feelings and beliefs of people that they see. I think they would give them uh, more hope. Uh, and uh, I, think, I think healing would be, would be quicker if, if doctors would, uh, uh, would understand their the patient's spiritual beliefs a little bit more and, and maybe tell them some of these stories that, that uh, maybe they can be healed. Uh, maybe their uh, an attitude or, or a faith uh, makes a big difference. And so I think uh, we'll see more peace uh, from people that have serious illnesses. I think we'll see more uh, uh, people that are healed quicker or, or completely, uh, unexplainedly, uh, if, if uh, more doctors and, and patients are aware of these kinds of things that happen that we can't explain scientifically. And don't you think that uh, be, being more open to the per- patient's experience of things that may not be provable scientific could be useful? Yes, it is. And, and you know, doctors have traditionally kind of poo-pooed uh, patients that say, you know, I've had this spiritual experience and what do you think? And I think doctors, uh, and many doctors are now, but I think doctors need to be a little more open about the patient's experiences. And, uh, uh, and I think uh, uh, because patients do have some unusual uh, experiences that, that may be beneficial in their healing. Yeah, we're just about out of time. What would you tell the doctors out there that are, you know, still non-believers, if you will? What would you suggest to them? I would say uh, look in your own life and look at your, your family's, uh, situ- uh, family's experiences and look for those coincidences that you've had in your life and that you've had with your patients that uh, you can't quite explain. And uh, those, those are things to, to pay attention to, and, and I think those are real. Watch for the little things in your life and, and listen to those, the little coincidences. And I've had those myself, and I think many doctors have, have had those. I think we all have them all the time, don't we? It's just a matter of listening to God. I think I think we do. I think we need to, yes. Yeah, just amazing. Well, you know, time has flown. It always does when I talk to you. I can't thank you enough for being on the show. Thanks, Claudia. It's been fun. It's been a blast. Our guest this hour has been internist and the author of Physicians' Untold Stories, Dr. Scott Kolbaba. His website, physiciansuntoldstories.com, and his book, <laughs> is really fascinating. I I would get it if I were you. For our amazing past episode collection, visit our website, www.missionevolution.org. This has been Mission Evolution Radio Show with Gwilda Wiecka on the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xvedbn.net. Join us next time as this mission continues, bringing information, resources, and support to an evolving world.